Hello students. Now let's resume our lecture on elementary canal. In the previous lecture we had uh, done the about the stomach. Now there is a small topic related with stomach and that is called as peptic ulcers. Now let's see what are those. Now, first of all, you will think about what is ulcer. I should tell you what is ulcer. So, ulcer is a lesion in skin or a mucus membrane. Ulcer is a lesion in skin or mucus membrane. Now, when ulcers occur in stomach or duodenum, that is the gastric ulcer or the duodenal ulcer, we call them as peptic ulcers. Now, previously, peptic ulcers were believed to be lifestyle disease. It caused lots of acidity related problems. There would be bleeding in stomach and urinum. But there were two scientists called Mary Marshall and Robin Warrens and these two, this duo founded out that peptic ulcers are not a lifestyle disease but they are caused due to bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. And now there are medicines available for the treatment of the same. Now for their findings, these two Australian scientists or you can say the physiologists were awarded with what the prestigious award called the Nobel Prize. Now in many books I have seen, this is written as Nobel instead of Nobel and this prize are given after an eminent personality called Alfred Nobel. He was Swedish national and these are considered to be very prestigious given in, it's just an extra thing, given in the fields of physics, chemistry, literature, medicine or physiology and for peace. So these two scientists, Barry Marshall and Robin Warrens were given the Nobel Prize for their findings related to peptic ulcer that this was not, this is not a lifestyle disease but caused due to a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. Now we move to the next part of stomach that is the small intestine. Now after the pylorus, the pylorus opens into the first part of small intestine that is called the duodenum. And here there is a sphincter called the pyloric sphincter. So from in from time to time the contents of stomach are passed on or you can say emptied into the first part of small intestine that is called the duodenum. Now let's see details of small intestine. Now small intestine is the lengthiest part of the alimentary canal but as it is uh, compactly fetal due to extensive coiling. Now, the length of 
small intestine is about 6 meter at autopsy means in a dead person because of the muscle relaxation in dead the length of small intestine would be about 6 meter the, the first part that is duodenum is about 6 uh, 25 centimeter jejunum is 2.5 meter and ileum measures about 3.5 meter but in living person, keep this in mind, in living person, it is about 4.5 meter. So, the, it is seated in the abdomen compactly because of the extensive coil. Now, this is the stomach. And the first part is, this is the deo. You can say the C shape or the U shape part. And then it continues further and then it is coiled inside. Okay. Now, this small intestine is the lung is the site of complete digestion here the digestion process gets completed means all complex molecules that is carbohydrates proteins and lipids are converted into the simplest forms now this small intestine secretes a juice called intestinal juice Or you can say suckers and tubicus. The amount that is secreted is about 2 to 3 liters per day. And the pH is about 7.6. So you see that it is alkaline pH and this contains many many enzymes in it. So we sum it up again intestinal juice is also called as suckers and rickers. The amount secreted per day is about 2 to 3 liters per day and it is, has alkaline pH about 7.6. It has many many enzymes and small intestine is a large site for digestion to get completed. Now, these the last part that is the ileum, if I draw it like this, this is the ileum, it merges with a, the first part of the large intestine that is the cecum. And then it continues as colon, Now let's see the parts. The first part that is ileum is joining or merging with the first part of large intestine that is the cecum. Now the second part that is colon is again named as, see this is the ascending part. So the first part is called as ascending colon and this is the shortest of the colon. Now this is transverse. So this is called as transverse colon. Now this part is descending. So this is called as the descending colon. And the terminating part over here where it takes a turn. The S shaped part is called as sigmoid colon. Previously it was called as pelvic colon. 
After that, this the then there comes the rectum, and rectum is about twenty five uh, sorry fifteen centimeter in length, and then this rectum continue has a small part about two centimeter that is called as the anal canal. and its opening is called as ans now let's sum it up large intestine its length is about 1.5 to 1.8 meter it is divided into three parts cecum colon and rectum now this cecum is merged with the ileum here there is a valve called that is called ileo cecal valve and this prevents the backflow of intestinal contents into the ileum here there is a projection on cecum which you called it as vermiform appendix and infection of this vermiform appendix results into a condition called appendicitis now after cecum this is a little bit enlarged part it can cecum continues it ascends upwards and this becomes the ascending colon this is the transverse colon this is the descending colon here this is the sigmoid or the pelvic colon and then the last part that is the rectum the opening is called as the ans so that ends with large intestine now a question might have cropped up in your mind although the length of small intestine is about 6 meter and that of large intestine is about 1.5 to 1.8 meter why is small intestine called small and large as large intestine this is not related with the length but it is related with the diameter the diameter of small intestine is small compared to the large intestine so the large intestine and the small intestine are named so because of the difference in the diameter and not the length now we take up after this the accessory organs that is liver pancreas and gall bladder now these organs liver pancreas and gall bladder they are not part of alimentary canal but they help in digestion so they are the accessory accessory digestive organs or you can say glands now the first one we take up that is the liver in biology wherever you read the word liver we write it as hepat anywhere that is hepatitis hepat anything hepat that is related with liver now this liver is the largest gland of human body now it is something like this it is located on the right side we just below the diaphragm right side of the abdomen just below the diaphragm and it is bilobed that is having the right and the left lobe now this liver 
if this lever has the main function of production of it produces the by juice other than that i forgot to mention over here you just remember a line there is a capsule called the gleason's capsule gleason's capsule is the characteristic feature of mammalian lever okay so the lever is the largest part of our body situated on the right side of the abdomen below the diaphragm it is having two lobes the right and the left and these lobes are covered by a capsule that is the gleason's capsule now the function that it uh, is attributed is production of mainly the production of bile juice other functions of lever there are many we'll take up few important ones so if i mention once again the functions are synthesis of bile juice it synthesizes vitamin a from its precursor that is beta carotene another function is storage of vitamins that is the fat soluble vitamins a b e and k commonly what we call as the adac and also vitamin b12 the other function is deamination of amino acid and form urea and the last function is detoxification detoxification of drugs and toxins you can remember as there are three s and two d's synthesis of bile juice synthesis of vitamin a from beta carotene storage of fat soluble vitamins such as a d e and k and also vitamin b12 and then there is the amination of amino acid from the urea now you know amino acid is the building block of every protein and when you remove when you remove just focus here when you remove nh2 that is the amine part or you can say the amino part this from the amino acid that is called as deamination and thereby it produces the urea and this urea is eliminated from human body this is a metabolic waste and this is eliminated by the excretory system we'll take this up in the upcoming chapter the last function as you had learned in the ninth standard it is detoxification of drugs and toxin so you might be aware so there would be lots of smooth endoplasmic reticulum over here okay so that ends up with functions of lever now let's see what is bile juice now by juice this is about a uh, amount that is produced on daily basis is 500 2000 ml per day and the ph is 7.6 okay now what are the contents in bile juice 
there are by salts and by pigments now by salts like sodium tocolate and sodium glycopolate these are the bile salts and the bile pigments are bilirubin and bilirubin now these are obtained due to degradation of old rbcs and they are eliminated from the body via urine and feces now other than that there are some phospholipids cholesterol but the main important thing that we need to remember is they contain the bile salts and another thing which i want you to remember over here this bile juice is non enzymatic juice means it is not having any enzyme in it okay now why is the presence of bile salts important now this bile salts does an important function that is called emulsification now what do you mean by what is emulsification emulsification is the breakdown of large fat globules into tiny droplets so that so that the lipases can act on them why because of increased surface area okay so by salts is assigned with an important function that is emulsification and emulsification is the first step that needs to be done before the digestion of lipids begin emulsification is the breakdown of large fat globules see like this into smaller droplets so that the by salts so that the lipases the enzymes can act on it okay now moving ahead the contents with the gastric contents which arrived in duodenum they had the acidic ph you remember gastric juices acidic 1.5 to 2.5 ph now this which arrived in duodenum that is called the acidic food that arrived in duodenum it is called as chyme now this chyme needs to be converted into alkaline ph so that now the enzymes which are going to act that is the pancreatic enzymes they need alkaline medium so this by converts the ph it converts it from acidic ph into the alkaline ph now as i said the by ph the liver by ph is so i'll write it over here liver by ph that is about 8.6 okay i made a mistake here it is 8.6 and this then goes into a small sac like organ that is a line inferior to the right lobe see this is the liver and here there is a small part that is called the gall bladder 
and this biliary bile or you can say the gallbladder bile gets concentrated and the pH converts into 7.6. So whenever the food from stomach enters into the duodenum, the bile that is stored in gallbladder will enter into the duodenum and make the food into alkaline. So that the juice that is going to come from pancreas, the pancreatic juice can, the pancreatic enzymes will act on it properly. So that ends with liver. Now let's start with the next part that is the pancreas. So you can divide the pancreas into head, neck, body and tail. This is the tail. This becomes the body part. This is the head and this is in the duodenum. I will draw a better diagram. Over here there is the pancreas and then it goes behind the stomach and still further behind the spleen. So this is the head, this part is the neck, the body part and this is the tail part. Now this pancreas is exocrinal as well as endocrinal gland. It is doing both the functions, exocrinal function and endocrinal function. Now, the juice made by pancreas is called as pancreatic juice. And this is the amount that is secreted is about 500 to 800 ml per day. The pH is 8.4. Okay. Now this juice contains many many enzymes like uh, trypsin which is going to, this is the active form of the enzyme which is going to act on proteins. There are many enzymes and there are inactive enzymes such as trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen and procarboxypeptidase but this will study in 11th standard. Whatever is given for 10th, let's see this is an active form of, of enzyme. This is going to act on proteins. Then there is another enzyme that is called pancreatic amylase which is going to act on the carbohydrates and the last is the pancreatic lipase. We also call pancreatic lipases as steaxin. And these acts on lipids. Okay. So there is a duct coming from pancreas. And it is having the alkaline pH. It empties a juice into the duodenum. It is containing enzymes, several enzymes to act. And digestion happens in the duodenum. Now, This last part that is the gallbladder. The 
gall bladder is a very small part situated behind the inferior to the right lobe of the this uh, liver and uh, it stores about 30 to 50 ml of bile and it this gets concentrated inside the gallbladder whatever bile comes from liver it is stored in gallbladder the storage is very less here as you can see it is simply 30 to 50 ml and over here this gets concentrated whenever fats arise in the duodenum this is released from the cystic duct. I will show you that. See, this is the right lobe. A hepatic duct from the right lobe. Hepatic duct from the left lobe. Okay. So, I say this is the left hepatic duct. This is the right hepatic duct. This makes the common hepatic duct. Now, there would be a duct that is joining that is arising from gallbladder and joining it and then this is called as the cystic duct and this becomes the bile duct. The common bile duct or you can say the bile duct. Now there is another duct that comes from the pancreas that is the main pancreatic duct. This is the pancreatic duct and these opens in the duodenum. And this is there in this opens in the Leo D. So as you can see, the bile and the pancreatic juice, they arise in duodenum and the main digestion of the food begins in duodenum. So that's all related with the structure or you can say the anatomy of alimentary canal. We'll catch up with the functioning or you can say physiology of alimentary canal in the next lecture. Till then, like, subscribe and share. Stay tuned for more lectures and stay safe.